الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي يوصل الى الناس كافة والى الخلق عامة بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم عليه وتفضل وبارك على سيد السادات وافضل الموجودات واشرف الموجودات واحسن الموجودات واكرم الموجودات واجمل الموجودات واكمل الموجودات سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى جميع الملائكه المعصومين وعلى جميع عباد الصالحين اما بعد لقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كلامه القديم العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد جاءكم من الله نور وكتاب مبين صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغ رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين My dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I consider it the greatest honor that could be conferred on me by the muslims of south africa to invite me to address you on this occasion of the celebration of an assembly held for the remembrance of Allah's beloved Prophet and the greatest in Allah's creation, the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, you have been reading, you have been hearing the verse from the Qur'an إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. You have been hearing this verse time after time inside the masjids, inside the homes, in the different the last three assemblies and the different assemblies of bars and so on. But have you ever thought 
the uniqueness of the action of sending salat and salam on the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I would like to invite your attention to a very important aspect which I presume might not have come before you. When you offer your prayers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not offer prayers with you. When you fast during the month of Ramadan or at any other time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not fast with you. When you do any other act of virtue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not participate with you. But when you sing salat and and salam on the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, then you are a participant with God and his malaika. That is the only action of virtue in which there is a participation of God with his servants. Is it something ordinary? Is it something on which you can just pass by like this? Why don't you give? Why don't the Muslims give proper thought to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same words, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي And remember, this يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي This tiga is tiga tul It is, it stands for a continuous action which never ceases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sending blessings of the on his beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam since all time. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yukalluna alam. Since all time. And he will continue to send blessings on his beloved Prophet alayhi salatu was salam up to all time seriously. And we, his humble, his very humble creatures, for our own benefit and only to obtain blessings and not to benefit the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in any way. Out of our own selfish motives in order that we may benefit. We have been asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of sheer mercy that we may also participate in this great and noblest of acts and said salat and send salat and salat. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Send Salat and send Salam on him. This is the command. There seems to be in this age of materialism because the minds of the people have become more materialistic as the modern thinker said, while the previous ages were the ages of faith, the present age is the age of doubt. And the spirit of this age has created an impact even on the minds of Muslims who are commissioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spiritualize every action of their life. They are today, some of them, even some of their ulama are speaking today in terms which belies their allegiance to the ideals and the spirit of Islam. 
we are told that a man is alive only when he is here in this world. We are told that death is a cessation of actual life, of actual life, and then we are told we do not know what happens after death. On the face of it, it appears to be a very simple and a very innocent statement. But it is a cruel statement. It is a statement which means an intent directly to the comprehensive guidance that is contained in the Holy Quran and the Hadith of the Holy Prophet and his last It is a denial of the theory of life and death, of the nature of life and of the nature of death, which Islam gave us. And the matter becomes very serious. The matter becomes unpardonable from the intellectual point of view. When we find that the latest advances in knowledge prove what our forefathers used to believe and which we are what we which we wish to challenge today. What is this matter in terms of which you consider life? What does modern science say about this matter? What is matter? If you ask Islam as to what is matter and what is spirit, what is the nature of this physical, tangible, solid universe and all these physical things here, including the human body, Islam teaches you that it is the process of quality transforming itself into quantity. Right to this, remember these words from me. You see, there is one thing which is called quality. There is another thing which is called quantity. You can describe a thing from both of the aspects that these are the qualities of this thing and this is the quantitative analysis of this thing, for instance, in connection with quantity. Those who are the students of science among you, you will say that, that that a particular thing has a certain mass and a certain density and a certain area and a certain volume and a certain specific gravity and a certain color and a certain direction. These are all quantitative measurements. Then there are the qualitative measurements which are inherent in the function of that thing, the end to which it is directed. I don't think that any one of you does not know the word quality. But I am speaking in terms of philosophy, of course, it's speaking in a very simple sense. Especially for those who, among you who are educated in the Western lore and modern subjects, you can understand it very well that according to Islam, the entire universe is the process of the transformation of quality into quantity. And if, the, if from the scientific and philosophical point of view, you were asked to reduce the concept of God, a God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is not material, who is, nor is he spiritual, nor is he psychical, nor is he anything you cannot explain him in any terms that that, that you know because the Holy Quran says about him, Lensa Kamitlin says there is nothing like even like the likeness of him. He is other than what you know. He is not matter and he is not mind and he is not soul. What is he then? My reply to it would be he is absolute quality in terms of philosophy. 
He is absolute quality plus zero quantity. Equal to what? He is quantity and not quantity. This world is quantitative plus quality. He is absolute quality. And when I say this, probably I am using terms which might be a bit tough. But when I explain it to you, I take you to Einstein to his theory of relativity. To the theory, to the other theory, the theory of quantum mechanics, the quantum theory. You know, those of you who are students of science, you know about the theory of the fundamental particles and the theory of waves in connection with what is the nature of this world. I won't leave you there, but I would like to emphasize here one equation which was given by Einstein and which has been accepted by all the scientists of the world. It is the scientists of the world about whom we are told that they are skeptical about religion. Because they want everything on the basis of verifiable knowledge. They want everything to be understood and derived on the basis of the scientific method, which is the inductive method of inquiry. You see, you know what is the scientific method. One plus four is equal to five. Four a 5 minus 4 is equal to 1 and 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. This is the scientific method of verification. And, and I mean, on a very simple level, I'm not talking here of physics or chemistry or astron uh, astronomy or anything. I would like to invite your attention, especially the attention of those who have he started new theories about the personality of the Holy Prophet and who wish to deny him that greatness which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred on him. I would like to invite their attention, the attention of these materialistically oriented Muslims to this equation. The equation is E E is equal to mc square, which means in simple language that energy is convertible into mass. I could make it simpler. Energy is something non-material. Energy is not something physical. Energy is not something which you can say is like this microphone or like this table or even like my body. Energy is something non physical. Mass means a physical characteristic. Energy is convertible into mass. And here I would like to repeat what I said that according to Islam, the entire universe and every human being is a process of the transformation of quality into quantity. It is originally what Einstein calls energy, and beyond that, something with the, which Einstein was not able to find out, finer than energy, pure quality, or pure thought, as Berkeley called it, or as the great Islamic Sufis, who were the only truly comprehensively enlightened people in the history of Islam, as they said, that the entire universe is only a manifestation of the attributes of God. It does not exist by itself. We, the Ahli Sunnah wal Jamaa, believe about this universe. This we have been taught by Sayyidina Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari, who formulated our creed that this world is la ain wa la ghair. It is neither God Himself. This universe is not a part of God. The moment you say that this universe is a part of God, you are committing shirk. 
you are regarding God as something finite, and it is blasphemy. Only a finite thing can be conceived as divisible into parts, not an infinite. Because the moment it is divided into parts, it becomes finite. You will cut the part at somewhere, and you will take off the part from there. It will be the infinite will be re reduced to finite, and to say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is finite is kufr. So it is la hai. This universe is not the same as God. It is not a part of God. Wala hai. It is also not other than God. How could it be other than God? If you say that this universe is other than God, then you are affirming two entities. You are affirming something eternal side by side with God, and you are a Muslim. So, according to the creed of the Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jamaa, the world is la ain wa la ghayb. How to conceive it? The world has proceeded as a contingent accident under the will of God from God. Saying it further, simplifying it further, I say, in order that you may be able to understand, all of you, that the world originated in the idea of God. It existed as idea, so to say, in the mind of God, and when He willed it to become tangible and to crystallize, it has been undergoing the evolutionary process towards tangibility, becoming coarser and coarser and coarser until it becomes to us matter, which is tangible and solid. I don't know whether you are following what I am saying, but you will have to follow it in order to understand the Holy Prophet Muhammad Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, once Einstein was asked, "What do you say about the creation of this world? How did this world come to be?" Einstein smiled and said. I am a scientist, and my work is to observe and to state conclusions on the basis of observations. Unfortunately, I, in this capacity of mine as a scientist, was not present at the time of creation. Therefore, I can't say. He was blessed. He said, but everybody must have some some conception about the nature of the world and about its origin. He said, "Yes, as a scientist, I believe for myself. This is my inner conviction that the world must have begun as a point of light in intense motion, as a point of light in intense motion, and this point of light." Projected itself in terms of extension and became space, and its motion projected itself in terms of duration, and it became time. It is again something tough, philosophical, but we we will come down as we proceed. You again go to modern physics and ask them what is the nature of matter. Unless you understand the nature of matter, you cannot understand the personality of the Holy Prophet and His Blessed Son. People will continue to talk. I am a witness to it that in the mosque at Medina, a Muslim came. You can't call him a kafir. 
He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He came and he had a cane in his home. And he said, inside the haram, what far have you come here all the way? The prophet, he is dead and dried like my dried stick. He is dead and dried and gone. Lifeless, absolutely lifeless stick of mine, he said. Inside the haram city. So it is not something imaginary. This fellow could attack this blood to me inside the Haram Sharif only because of his ignorance. If he had been a student of science and if he had been a student of theology in the real sense of the word, he would not never have said that. So I am bringing forth certain scientific facts, maybe some of you may, for them it may be a burden. Of course, I know about my friend in my front who drive my, who drove my car. He is a student of the final class in, the, in medicine, so he is a student of science, and I am sure there are many others. Yes. You see, in modern science, when you want to find out the nature of matter, there are two processes. One is the process of chemical analysis. The other is the process of physical analysis, as to find out what is the nature of matter. The process of physical analysis is based on temperature, on heat. The scientist takes a piece of matter. It may be a piece of phosphorus or sodium or magnesium or iron or copper or anything. He weighs it. He takes down all its properties and puts it into the apparatus which is hermetically sealed. Then he raises the temperature. This is the process. Something very simple which all of you can understand. You know, I am speaking here to the students of science. You know, even superficially, that matter has three forms, even for a child. Gaseous, liquid, and solid. Now, H2O, H2O is water, but it is also vapor, it is also ice. Ice is H2O, water is H2O, the vapor is H2O. The H2O is there. It is basically H2O. You see it in different forms. This is the process of physical analysis. If you heat ice, it will become water. If you heat water, it will become vapor. But it will remain H2O. This is very simple. I think it doesn't require anyone to be a scientist. Now what the physical scientist does, he takes a piece of matter, subjects it to heat, so it, it starts converting itself into its forms which preceded the form in which we find it. The solid becomes liquid, the liquid becomes gaseous. Now after that, we get a sort of flame, then it is converted into molecules, then it is converted into atoms, then beyond that it is converted into the intermediate with particles and the lightweight particles, the K mason and the anti K mason and all those things. Then it is converted into what was said to me by the scientists 20 years ago that it is converted into vibration of light. In those days, when I was a student at Aligarh, the scientific world had this dictum, all matter is ultimately vibration of life. And the scientists, in the meantime, proceeded with further emphasis. And now they say that all matter is ultimately anti-matter, anti-matter. 
All matter is ultimately empty matter. If you ask them, what this empty matter means? I don't think there is any need to ask them, because the very word indicates the empty matter is that which is not matter. The empty matter is that which is the very opposite of matter in all its qualities. Now, if matter can be seen, the empty matter cannot be seen. If matter can be weighed, the empty matter cannot be weighed. If matter occupies a certain volume, the empty matter does not occupy a volume. If matter has a certain area, empty matter has no area. I bring your minds back to what I said in the beginning. According to Islam, this world is quality transforming itself into quantity. You must have, have heard even from your ulama or in your even elementary books of theology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world out of absolute Adam, out of sheer non-existence. Now this empty matter is the non-existence of matter, plainly. And the scientists have reached in their physics laboratories only up to this point. But even this is even this is enough for us to understand what the Holy Prophet is. To understand the nature of his life when he was here, physically visible and contactable by the human being, to understand what he is now, what is the nature of his life now. Whether he has passed away like the ordinary human being, and what is the passing away even of the ordinary human being? We should try to understand this, and I think then the different types of confusions which are arising in the minds of the people will vanish. The Holy Quran says that I am guidance, a comprehensive guidance in all matters in which human beings need guidance. Now ask the Holy Quran, how did Allah create this, these heavens and the earth? How did Allah create these things which we see? Ask the Holy Quran and ask the expander of the Holy Quran, that is the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, better whom Better than whom there is no authority who can expand the Holy Quran. He is the mouthpiece of the Quranic revelation. What do you find in the Quran? The Quran says, Allah nurus samawati wa al Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Take it, literally. The safety is there. We don't know in what sense light. That is true. Because when as a student of science we study light, we find that light is of different types and different categories. There is the coarse light which we see. Then there are other types of light. The alpha rays, the beta rays, the gamma rays, the delta rays, the infrared rays, the ultraviolet rays, the X rays, so many other rays, about 21 of them which have been found out by the science. Now the function of each one of them is not the same, the constitution of each one of them is not the same, the laws which govern each of these lights are not the same. I'll tell you about an experiment made. There was a, a, an, a, an eminent scientist in the United States called Dr. George Antonoff. He was a member of the United States Atomic Energy Commission. He came to Islam and became a Muslim through me. When I went to, the, to his country the next time and I met him there, 
because he knew that i was also a very humble student of time so he would talk to me on kind of theory he told me about a new experiment that he had made the experiment was that he operated upon one eye of a cat took out the eye ball from the socket gave the other eye in check then he reduced this eye ball into its final form antimatter that the scientists are doing day in and day out i'm sure it is an ordinary experiment with we reduce this eye ball which had been taken out of the socket into antimatter then he exposed the other eye of the cat through one foot of leg with a very narrow aperture inside that exposed the other eye of the cat with the vibrations of this antimatter obtained from that amputated eye remember this matter this antimatter which he had obtained from the amputated eye belonged to the same cat and its vibrations were exposed through a very narrow aperture in a tube of lead which was 1 feet by 1 feet by 1 feet and he told me that the moment these vibrations were exposed to the other eye of the cat the entire brain burst out of the cat what is this phenomenon energy is convertible into mass quality is convertible into quantity antimatter is convertible into matter and matter is convertible into antimatter now talk about what is life and what is death and what is this body and how perishable it is and how non perishable it is what is the nature of this body and what is the nature of human existence the entire new changes then try to proceed to find out as to who is the prophet muhammad ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mean this is a, an infinitely vulgar way of saying that the holy prophet is like us the most vulgar way of saying it only a most ignorant man and a most devious person can say it who is absolutely ignorant the holy prophet is matchless you cannot compare him in creation to anyone of course he is god creator he is not god but he is matchless and he is the highest in god's creation it is not a matter of interpretation my dear sir it is not something sectarian it is the very foundation of islam take it away and, and islam is there no more that is the spirit of islam everything in this world has got a body and it has got a spirit take away the spirit from the body and the body is dead lifeless you won't love that body which is dead take away the personality of the holy prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam as it is from islam it is a lifeless ritual meaningless absolutely god doesn't need rituals and this many people do not understand unfortunately now go to the quran and ask and go to the hadith and ask The Quran says Allah in the samawati wa ardh. In modern science now this is understandable. If the final stages 
or if the original condition of matter was something like the vibrations of light that imperceptible that imperceptible light which cannot be seen but in its nature it can only be called light then the creator of this universe must also be called light because light can proceed only from light and not from darkness therefore allah is the samawati wal ard allah is the light of the heavens and the earth all right then go to the hadith and ask the holy prophet alayhi salatu was salam as to what was happening at that time when this creation took place He says, "Can Allah who Adam yakum ma'ahu say that was the original state? Nothing could be bargained except Allah. There was a stage of existence when nothing could be bargained except Allah. Can Allah who Adam yakum ma'ahu say? Then he says that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." Will this world to come into being? The Quran says that is the process of creation, in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala creates everything. Inna ma amru idha arada sayan an yaqul lahu kul fayakum. The process of creation with God is that is simply when He wills it to be. The the simple command goes kun be and lo it becomes. It's not like the human being. A human being has got to collect materials for manufacturing a thing, and those materials also are not created by the human being. They are only placed in certain positions in certain relationship with one another. You see, then only creation takes. Take place in the hands of men, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is Absamad. He is the absolute. He is the originator of all things. Badi Ustamawati Bala Bin Fatu Ustamawati Bala Bin Yu Adu Yu Quran says. So the process of creation is Inna Ma Amru Ida Awadatan An Yakul Ala Ukun Fayakul. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When the Holy Prophet Alayhi Salatu Was Salam says, "Kana Allahu walam yakum ma'ahu shay." Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, according to the Holy Quran, is Al Hayy and Al Hayyum, the self-existent and the self-subsistent. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the source of all things, and consequently, He is existence personified. He is the existence. Not only is he self-existent, but he is the existence from which life flows. All right. Sure, you will admit that everyone will will admit it and does admit it. Now, when the Holy Prophet and Islam was Islam says that there was a stage in existence. When Kaan Allah who Walam Yakum Maahu say, then imagine it. What is what it means? It means that there was existence on the one hand and non-existence on the other. Walam Yakum Maahu say means that there was non-existence by the hand of God. God alone existed. Is clear? Follow it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is light. Allah Nur Samawati Wa Raud. Therefore, non-existence is darkness. Or Adam is darkness. Wajud is light. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is wajibul wajud regarding to the most conservative Muslim thinkers. Who is the wajud? Our existence. And there was the Adam besides him, as the Holy Prophet says, "Can Allah Almighty come out of space?" 
all right then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will this will this this world to become or to exist how we know from the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala employs his doom inma anuhu idha arada shay'an an yaqul idha arada shay'an this irada is there so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will this world to become then for our imagination the only possible way for us to imagine how it must have happened remember this for our imagination reality is known to god but whatever we can infer from the quran and the hadith is that because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is light therefore his will is light and the light of his will fell on the canvas of darkness or of non existence and when it fell on the canvas of darkness a point of light was created as you create a point of light with your torch when you throw the light of the the, the torch in intense darkness in the night now the holy prophet alayhi salatu wassalam says the hadith is in this ya incontrovertible absolutely that the first thing which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the light of the holy prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam how must it have taken place this is also mentioned in the hadith that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to create this world he said muhammad he didn't say kun duniya no kun al alam no the first word which came in this cosmos to Iko was Muhammad, King Muhammad, and this point of light came into existence. This is the new level of the first light in entire creation, and the light came from God. As it is said, "Ana min nur Allah wal khalq kullu." This light, mind you, is not God. it is not a part of god because the god personality is indivisible what is it that also you should understand because here many people say oh if we believe like this although it is given there in the hadith and so on it is it is not i'll explain this to you scientifically there is the sun on the sky experiment it right now what is fixed and what is not fixed the sun is there take a convex lens convex lens focus the convex lens before the sun so that the convex lens absorbs the rays of the sun when it absorbs the rays of the sun then a small sun is created on the surface of the convex lens the form is the same is the form of the sun with all that brightness and all those rays going out and impossible for you to look at it just say it is impossible for you to look at the sun place the palm of your hand below it there is light and there is heat these are the two characteristics of the sun these are the two qualities of the sun that the sun gives light and the sun gives heat this convex lens which in its nature is cold it has neither light nor heat when it is exposed to the sun it starts behaving as a sun it is not a sun when the point of light emerges on the canvas of non existence as the nur e muhammadi it was not 
that god personality was divided and a portion came there just as the personality of the sun is not divided the sun remains where it is the sun remains where it is but its image comes with the same quality and this is the abdullah or slave of allah this is the slave of allah people say and they preach that to be the slave of allah means is to be debased they think just the opposite way to be the slave of allah means to absorb blessing from god when this convex lens becomes the slave of the sun when the convex lens becomes the slave of the sun that is focused itself right there and does not turn this way or that then it absorbs the rays of the sun if it does not focus if it, is, if it does not become the abd of the sun it does not subject itself to the influences of the sun it will remain cold as it is just a piece of glass but the moment it becomes slave it focuses itself before the sun in a manner whereby it can absorb the rays of the sun it becomes a miniature sun it becomes the repository of a miniature sun giving both light and heat this is the conception of abdiya in islam the conception of abdiya is not that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so bankrupt in giving blessings to mankind that the more a person becomes his abd the more empty he becomes this is a very wrong concept this is a blasphemous concept of course as i told you that this sun which is created as an image but with the properties of the of the sun on the surface of the convex lens is a sun which is not al hayy wal qayyum it is not a sun which is asamad it is dependent on the rays of the sun it may continue to focus itself but if clouds come between it and the and the and the sun the sun that is created by the influence of the sun on the surface of the convex lens will not be there anymore similarly if the clouds of disobedience to god intervene between god and his creature then the creature loses this status of abdiyat and i uh, further further expand what is the status of of abdiyat according to the hadith given in the sahih and that will enable us all to understand the huh all right why do you ask me this please yes uh, another attainment another attainment no 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 you see no no you see there is another engagement brother matti is absolutely right in that don't think that that way at all he would love to hear this lecture for another three hours right here see, but there is another engagement and engagements are to be kept by muslim so you see what islamic theology says is that the first point of light came into existence which was not god it was not god but it was from god kad ja'akum min allah nurun verily to you has come he who is nur from god and he is the holy prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam and as einstein says that it was this point of light which evolved itself into this entire universe on the shapes of extension and duration giving birth to space and time because this world is spatio temporal 
Similarly, it says the hadith, Ana min nurillahi wal khalqu kulluhum min nuri. I am from the light of God. And everything in this universe is from my light. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa marana muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina wa marana muhammad wa ala sayyidina. Now, what is the status of this? What is the near joke? Maazallah on the part of God to have created, to have given precedence to the Nure Muhammadi. To have created the Nure Muhammadi as the first thing was just something in the nature of some of a, what we call a brain thing, a thing without consequences, do I mean? No. God Almighty is above all vain things. Nothing from Him can be vain. Nothing from Him can be meaningless. It had a very great meaning. And that meaning we understand for the... Because there is no time, unfortunately, so I'll cut down my lecture right here. But I'll uh, uh, clarify this point. What is the up? Oh, Akbar said, Bitha ke arsh pe rakha hai, tu ne hai waiz. Bitha ke arsh pe rakha hai, tu ne hai waiz. وہ کیا خدا ہے جو بندوں سے احتراز کرے If by becoming slave of God I, do, I cannot develop myself in, in a status I don't need to be his slave but for Every human being does something for the sake of benefit What benefit sir? That is human nature If I serve If I serve a high place human being and he becomes pleased with me and he becomes pleased with me if he is a wealthy man then he converts my poverty into wealthiness he does it if he is possessor of knowledge then he converts me from an ignorant man into a scholar what is this God of these people that you become his abd and you continue to become dibir? Astaghfirullah azim. This was not taught by the Holy Prophet. This is their own crooked way of thinking because of ignorance. I'll place before you a hadith from the Siha accepted by no less personality than Imam Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i and Malik and Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Fakhruddin al-Razi and Imam al-Ghazali and Ghosr Adam. Not by the, the, the pygmies of this era. The hadith is, the hadith is, Allah subhanahu, the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'll make it brief, Brother Makhi. La yazalu abdi yataqarrabu ilayya bin nawafil hatta uhibbu. My servant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith of Qutsi, that when my servant accomplishes all the pride, all the obligations, and then he seeks me, seeks my nearness. My abundance in the field of optional virtues, optional virtues, of course having accomplished all the pride, not that leaving pride and then taking to Nawafid. This is not Islamic way. I make him my beloved. And when I start loving him, I become his ears with which he hears. 
and the eyes with which he sees, and the hands with which he holds, and the feet with which he walks, and Zad al Behaki, and the tongue with which he speaks, and the mind with which he thinks. What is this? This is the way opened by the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam for his humble followers. What must be the status of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam through whom all these blessings are received? Because the Quran says, you cannot become beloved of God, O Muslims, until you become slaves of the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. The Quran says, Qul kuntum tuhibbun Allah, O Prophet alayka salatu wa salam, proclaim to me, to these Muslims, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ittabi'uni, tie yourself behind me, become my slave, imitate me all the time. What else is slavery? It is the biggest form of slavery, not only to obey the command, but to continuously keep an eye on the Prophet alone and to imitate, 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 imitate. You can't imitate anyone unless you are constantly seeing him. And it is for the purpose of seeing him that we say, Ya Nabi, Salaamu Alaika. For the purpose of seeing him, we want to see him, we want to experience him. And therefore we have been taught to say this in the At-Tahiyyat, As-Salaamu Alaika Ayyuhan Nabi Yuhu Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuhu. So a person cannot walk on the way of becoming beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without becoming a slave of the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam personality. According to the Quran. And when the slavery of the Holy Prophet personality, the slavery of the Holy Prophet personality, raises the person to the fifth, to that stage where he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, that he becomes his ears with which he hears and his eyes with which he sees. I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, this word, this hadith does not mean hulul or incarnation because incarnation is explicitly ruled out in Islam. It means what it means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what it means. But we can understand something. We can understand that no sound in this entire cosmos can be absent from that ear about which Allah says that I have become his ear. Nothing in this entire universe can be absent from the vision of that person about whom Allah says that I have become his eyes. That is clear. Nothing can be far removed from the hand of a person about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have become his hand. And nothing in this universe can be away from a person from the feet of a from the feet of a person about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have become his feet. And no word coming from the tongue of that person if he says something. It is impossible that it will not happen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I have become his tongue. As Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, Rahmatullah Ta'ala alayhi said, Gustahe hu, Gustahe, Allah buad, Gatti ad khulqu me abdullah buad. When a person becomes the slave of God, then when he speaks, it appears to other human beings that it is his tongue which is speaking, but not his tongue, it is Allah who is. So he or کوئی اور بولتا ہے یہ میری زبان سمجھو اس اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی کو ڈسپیک 
Kimi uwe flema on Mount Sinai. Ya Musa fahlan alayk. Inna ka bil wazi al muqaddas al tuwa. If he spoke there, he is not dumb. Maaz Allah. He speaks. Try to speak with him. And you will hear his message. Try to see him. And your vision will catch the vibrations of the majesty of his personality and of his love. And to see the Holy Prophet Alayhi Salaam, people say, where is he present and what is he present inside this earth or above the heavens? Poor people do not know. If the slave of the Holy Prophet Alayhi Salaam can become, can transcend space and time, remember my word, can transcend space and time, what about the Master? What is this talk? What is this talk? You, the atheist among the scientists, can create a machinery that if they fix that machinery at a certain place, a televising machinery of a particular sort, if they fix it at a particular place and they place anything there, then that thing can be seen in one million homes simultaneously. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is less efficient than this scientist. Ma'az Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he showers high praises on his beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Yet he has not made him better than a piece of stone. Is it human reason, my dear brother? My dear brothers, I am not talking about Iman or Kufr. This is human reason. This is sense. How have we become so senseless? Because we are materialistic. Because we are pygmies, therefore we, we, we wish to measure even the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam with our dwarf status. This is not correct. The major of all things, remember, the major of all things in this universe is only the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Tabarak al-lazhi nazzal al-furqana ala abdi. Blessed is the Lord, who bestowed and endowed his abdu Muhammad al-Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam with the standard and the criterion, Al-Furqan. So the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam is the standard whereby everything is to be judged right here and it will also be judged on the day of judgment. Beware that you stand under the shadows of his blessings, otherwise you stand nowhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa